Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Moralis tutorial video. Today, we are going to learn how to integrate Moralis into your Flutter mobile applications. In this sample project, we are going to have a button to connect to MetaMask. This is going to trigger the MetaMask application. After we unlock the wallet, we are going to have this message to connect to the application. Once connected, it's going to automatically return to the app, and we are going to have the information of the wallet displayed over here. Now I have a button called Get NFTs, and with just one click, we are going to have all the NFTs this specific wallet address has for the network we are using. So with simple HTTP requests, we are going to be able to take any Flutter application and connect it to Moralis APIs. So if you want to learn how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. What's up, YouTube? My name is Vasily, your Web3 instructor from Latin America, Ecuador. I've been wielding on the space since 2020 with cool crypto projects. In my free time, I really enjoy singing and playing the guitar. And if the time is good, I like to go out and take some meditations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the video and start building. OK, let's get started. Here I have a template project on which we have the same connect with MetaMask button. But for now, this button does not do anything. So. First of all, be sure your emulator or your actual phone has the MetaMask application installed and you already have set up an account over here. Now, in order for us to work with all the dependencies we need, we need to add those to the popspec.yaml here on the project. First, we are going to need the HTTP request library, the Google fonts, just to make our application look nicer. Then we are going to need URL launcher and wallet connect dart. If we click Control or, co or Command Save, this is going to automatically install all the dependencies on our project. Now let's get started to adding functionality to this or that on my login page. I have a variable called connector, and here we are going to use that wallet connect functionality. So first of all, let's import that on the project, port wallet connect dart, and now we can use that here on the connector. So connector is going to be equal to wallet connect, and here we have to specify the details of our application. First, we're going to use a bridge, which is going to use that walletconnect.org. We have to declare the client. So client meta is going to be equal to const here meta. And here we have to declare the name, the description, the URL, and the icon. So the name is going to be equal to Morales NFTs. The description is going to be, again, Morales NFTs, but let's say get NFTs. Instead, the URL here we can use any address of our web page of client, let's say moralis.io, and we are going to use an icon here, which is going to come as an HTTP image, just for using that wallet connect image. You can add any image you want over here. So I'm just going to copy and paste the link of the actual image. Let's say this, this is going to automatically format. And with that, we already have the information we need to use Wallet Connect to connect with MetaMask. Once we have the Wallet Connect instance, we can now create a new function to connect to MetaMask. So let's say here, login using MetaMask. This is going to take the build context, this context. It's going to be an asynchronous functionality because we want to wait until we made all the confirmations inside MetaMask to connect the wallet. Here we need to first verify if we are already connected. So I'm going to say that if we don't have a connector dot connected, it means if we are not already connected, then we are going to do something. And as a good practice, let's also add a try catch statement. Inside of the try statement, we are going to try to connect to the wallet. So bar session is going to be equal to await connector dot create session. Here we are going to specify some parameters. So let's say on display URI, we are going to send the URI. This is going to be an asynchronous function. And inside of the function, we are going to say the URI is going to be equal to the URI we are sending as parameter. And also, let's say await launch URL, let's say the URI. The mode is going to be a launch mode. And instead of using native, we are going to use external application. This configuration we are making over here is just to be sure that we are using this to open an external application such as the MetaMask application. And to accomplish that, the auto completion is good enough to understand I want to use 
the URL launcher library over here. That's why we install it on the bookstake.yaml. But if yours didn't add it automatically, don't forget you need to previously import this URL launcher. If everything goes fine, let's just print that on the console. So session.accounts0. This step is optional. It's just for us to be sure that the actual information of the account is getting printed. So again, print session.chainid. In order for us to understand which is the wallet which was connected and also the chain the wallet is using. Now we need to update the session variable I have over here. So I'm going to take this, put it over here. And now I'm going to say set state. This is similar as something we might do on React projects on which we are going to set the state of a variable. So set the state, it's going to be an empty function over here. And inside of this, we are going to say the session is going to be equal to the session we are getting now from MetaMask. With these two functions, we are now able to use this button to connect to MetaMask. So down here, I have this elevating button, which for now, the on press functionality is still empty. And here we are going to use that functionality. So let's say here login using MetaMask and send the content. Let's save this. Now, after reloading the application, if we click on the connect with MetaMask button, this is going to trigger the MetaMask application and it's going to give us the same prompt I showed you before to connect. So if we click on connect, as you can see here, we don't have any information displayed over here, but we already have the information. We are using this wallet address and we are connecting to the Guerli network over here, which has the ID of five. Now let's take the information we are getting on the console and show it over here in order for the user to know that they actually have the wallet connected. So here above this container, which has the get NFTs button, let's add some text. The text is going to be account and let's add some styling over here using those Google fonts. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. The style is going to be equal to these Google fonts. And now let's add another text widget in order to get that information about the wallet. So it's going to be actually the same, but I'm going to use that session accounts zero, the exact same I used over here on the function on which I'm printing this into the console. Let's save this. And now we are going to have that wallet information as I show you at the beginning of the video. So now we already learned how to connect MetaMask to our Flutter applications. Now let's go to the most important part. We need this button to be able to show all the NFTs we have on this specific wallet. And for that, you already know the answer. We are going to use the Morales NFT API endpoints. So if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause, go to Morales.io, create your free account, and here in your admin panel, you are going to get access to your free API key. This API key is pretty good for testing or for small applications. But if you're working with a big NFT collection or marketplace, step up your blockchain game with Morales Pro. With twice the computing power and more requests, you can handle even the most demanding projects. Plus, enjoy unlimited daily records on your streams with automatic retries for a seamless experience. And with more replays and longer retention for your historic streams, you'll never miss a beat. Don't settle for basic, upgrade to Morales Pro today and take your projects to the next level. On today's tutorial, we are going to use the Get NFTs by Wallet endpoint, which is available for different programming languages such as Node.js, Python, Go, PHP, and more. In this case, we are going to create a really simple Flask server using Python, and we are going to use this code to get that done. So here in my project, I have a new folder called backend on which I have an empty Python script called app.py. In order for you to be able to execute this, please be sure you have Flask installed on your virtual environment. So first, let's import Flask and request. After that, as storing your API key into your code is a bad practice, we are going to have also here another file called .m on which we are going to store our Morales API key. So we are going to need the .m library as well. After that, we need to import Morales. And if you don't have any of those dependencies installed, you can just use pip install python.m Morales and Flask. But of course, I already have them all. Also, we are going to use JSON and 
OS, which are standard libraries which already comes with any Python version you might use. First of all, let's load that EMB file over here. And now we have to create the Flask app with app equals Flask and the name on the application. Also, we need to declare the API key and we are going to have this variable called Morales API key, which we are going to put here on the .m file. This is going to be equal. Let's go to the Morales admin panel, copy this API key and paste it into your code. Remember, this is sensitive information, so please do not share this API key with anyone. Now we can define a new root on the application. So app.root, instead of using this endpoint, this is going to be get user NFTs. This is going to be a get method. And now we can declare a view. So dev get NFTs. And inside of here, we are going to now use that API endpoint. So we can just go back to the Morales documentation over here and copy all the code provided over here. But I'm going to ignore the API key and the import of Morales because I already have it. So let's copy this. Let's go back to my code, paste all that over here and make this part of the function. And as easy as that, we already have an endpoint to connect to Morales APIs using our API key and make this petition. Of course, we have dummy information over here. The default chain is going to be Ethereum and is going to use this address, but we want to use this information from our Flutter application. So let's say address is going to be equal to request.ars.getAddress and the same is going to be for the chain. So chain equals request.ars.getChain. And let's replace those over here. So let's use chain over here. And also let's use the address over here. And to this point, we already have all we need to get that request from the Morales API, but I'm going to use more parameters over here. I'm going to remove the media items and instead add a limit because we don't want to have more than 100 NFTs displayed. And also I have the metadata normalized because I want to use that on the Flutter application. So normalized metadata going to be true. And of course, instead of just printing the response over here, I want to say response is going to be equal to json.doms result. And I'm going to have an indent of four. And finally, let's return that response. And as easy as that, we have all we need to connect to the Morales API and get the information of all the NFTs the specific wallet address has. Of course, as we are running this as a Flask server, let's add an entry endpoint over here. And as I'm using a virtual emulator for my Android device, I'm going to set the host as 000. So I'm going to have a public IP address I can connect to. So now inside of the backend application on my terminal, I can say python app.py. This is going to run our server and we are going to use this IP address to connect to the server. So I'm just going to copy this, go back to the project and over here, I'm just going to paste it as a comment. Here I have another component on my project called list NFT darts on the components folder. And here first we need to specify which are the parameters this component is going to receive. Of course, we need to get both the address and the chain. And inside of the constructor of this component, let's send that parameters and they are going to be required because we are not going to be able to ask the request to our local class server if we don't get that information. Then here I have a future function called load NFTs. And inside of the function functionality, let's say final response is going to be equal to await http.get we are going to use uri so uri.parse and here we need to specify the ip address of our server so i already take that here let's copy again this ip address we can always come back to our terminal and get the same information so let's connect to that endpoint we need to use that get user nfts view on our flux server and here we are going to send the parameters. So the address is going to be equal to the widget.address and the chain is going to be equal to widget.chain. Both of those parameters are going to come on the constructor when we want to create this new component NFT list page. 
And as we send in over a JSON from our server, here we need to specify the headers, and the headers is going to say content type application JSON. Now we need to decide what we are going to do if this response goes well. So I'm going to say if response.status code 200, let's say final JSON data is going to be equal to JSON decode and the response.body. And now we can use again a set state functionality to update this NFT list variable I have over here. So set state. NFT list is going to be equal to JSON data, and I want the result from this response. And let's also print the response.body on the console. And that's it. In this part of the component, I'm just taking the information from that response and rendering a card for each one of the NFTs we are going to get from the Morales API endpoint. And as easy as that, just using this simple HTTP request, we are connecting to our Flask app, which is going to connect to the Morales API endpoint and get the information of all the NFTs the wallet has. So in order to use that, let's go back to the login page.dart and import this component. So from video Flutter NFTs, I'm going to go to the components folder and import that list NFTs.dart. So down here on this get NFTs button, which the on press functionality is empty for now, let's use that component. So inside of this async function, I'm going to say navigator.push for us to navigate to this new component called list NFTs. We are going to always send the context and we are going to use this material page root, which already comes with Flutter. Inside of here, we are going to set up the builder. The builder is going to be for the constructor parameters this function needs. Let's say again the context as a function. Let's now render that NFT list page. But instead of using just the chain, which is going to come just as a number, the number five for the Goerli network, for example, if we look to the Morales documentation, we are going to know that for that networks, which has a decimal value, we are going to need to add a 0x at the beginning. So instead of just using this, I'm going to say that the chain is going to be equal to 0x and the session chain ID to a string. And as easy as that, we already added the functionality for that render NFTs button, which is going to call this NFT list page. And inside of this component, we are calling our local Flask server, which is going to connect to the Morales endpoint using again this get NFTs view over here, on which we are sending the chain and the address as parameters. So let's test this out. So now I just reloaded the application. Let's click on connect with MetaMask, unlock the wallet. Now I just reloaded the application. Let's click on connect with MetaMask, unlock the wallet, connect. Now we have this get NFTs. Let's click here. And as I showed you at the beginning of the video, we are getting all the information of the NFTs this specific wallet address has for the Goerli network, because again, here on MetaMask, I'm using Goerli as the testnet. Again, the important part here for you was to understand how to create your Flask server to connect to the Morales API endpoint and then call it inside of your Flutter application using the HTTP package, which is going to connect to that server and send over the information we need as parameter. The rest, the rendering of the card, is just some standard things I made to make these cards nicer, but you can modify this however you want on the context of your application. And with just really simple steps, we made it. We was able to connect our application to MetaMask and then get the information of the NFTs. And this is just the beginning because now you're able to use any Morales API endpoint to get information out of the blockchain for NFTs, tokens, balances, transactions, events, blocks, and a lot more. And that was it for today's tutorial. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the GitHub repo. So check out the link on the description. And as you are already here, click over here to subscribe to Morales channel, turn on the notifications, and also check out more videos. Thanks for watching till the end and see you on the next occasion.